There is no mountain higher than Swirl Mountain. No valley too low, no ocean too deep. No climb is met with greater adversity than the steep climb of Swirl Mountain. Most that attempt to climb are doomed to fail. Survive in Bottom Shelf Brad, K16. Elizabeth Sullivan, butchered by white husband, Matthew Sullivan, finally convicted in California court. Right. Prosecutors say mounting financial pressures and marital difficulties led to Matthew Sullivan murdering Elizabeth, his wife, and the mother of the couple's two young daughters. He didn't give her a quick, painless death. It was essentially torture. One year after a jury found 36-year-old Matthew Sullivan guilty of brutally stabbing his wife Elizabeth to death in their Liberty Station home, the former Navy man learns his sentence, 16 years to life in prison. Leading up to that in San Diego Superior Court Friday, Elizabeth's loved ones had their say. The longer sentence won't make the pain go away, nor will my recanting of the sorrow I've gone through these last six and a half years make this man feel any differently than he does now. Matt has caused a tremendous amount of pain to me, Liz's family and friends. There are no words to describe this pain that still sits in the pit of my heart. Prosecutors say after murdering his wife in October 2014, Matthew Sullivan hid her body inside... In this horrific case of murder, butchery, and mayhem, convicted killer Matthew Sullivan is finally sentenced to 16 years to lifetime imprisonment in the state of California. This whole court ordeal took nearly seven years to come to a conclusion. And unfortunately for the children of this union, both their father is gone and their mother is gone. The timeline of the case of Elizabeth Sullivan going missing, and finally, on 19 March 2021, Matthew Sullivan being convicted of her murder in the second degree, began back on October 13, 2014, when Elizabeth Sullivan was reported missing, not by Matthew Sullivan, but actually by a friend of Elizabeth Sullivan at the time. Elizabeth's remains were found in the San Diego Bay in October of 2016. According to a January 2018 press release from the San Diego County District Attorney's Office, after identifying Elizabeth's body, San Diego homicide detectives continued their investigation and identified the suspect in Elizabeth's murder to be her former husband, Matthew Sullivan. After San Diego homicide detectives finally declared Matthew Sullivan as the primary suspect in the murder of his wife, authorities arrested Matthew Sullivan outside his home in Wyoming, Delaware on Wednesday morning, January 31, 2018. He was arrested in Delaware and was extradited to San Diego to face a charge of murder one. In the felony complaint released by the San Diego County District Attorney's Office, the complaint stated that Matthew Sullivan murdered Elizabeth Sullivan on or about in between October 13, 2014 and October 14, 2014. The complaint alleged at the time that Matthew used a knife to do so. San Diego Attorney's Office prosecutors went on to say that Matthew Sullivan had kept Elizabeth Sullivan's body in a small deep freezer in the couple's San Diego home for nearly two years. The motive in this case, according to the same attorney, 
Jill Lindbergh, she argued that Matthew Sullivan killed his wife because she had an affair and was planning to leave him. Matthew Sullivan had had a career as a Navy sailor and something that stood out in my mind was that the prosecutors in this case said that he almost got away with the murder, but what happened, his final attempt to hide the body at the bottom of the San Diego Bay is what got him caught. For anyone that's familiar with the hit TV series, I almost got away with it. Reading the case of Matthew Sullivan reads like an episode straight off of that hit television show. On that show, they deal with murders, drug dealers, bank robbers, and jail escapees. And sure, the stories are different, but one of the things they talk about in that show is the motive is always the same for these criminals, to stay out of prison. So on that show, this is what they speak of, trying to... Something that a viewer will learn from watching the show, I almost got away with it, is the different motives that push these convicted fugitives in their crimes and how they go to all these different extents to change their identities, evade the law, and how they almost got away with it. In this case, Matthew Sullivan almost got away with it, but thank God he was finally tracked down, sentenced, and convicted. Had Elizabeth Sullivan lived, she would have been 39 years old this year. It's not for one fatal, fatal decision in choosing a bottom shelf Brad. But there is another set of victims in this family tragedy. The two biracial children who will be left behind to be raised by relatives and learning as they grow up the brutal way that Matthew Sullivan killed his black wife. For those that have followed the Surviving Bottom Shelf Brad series and have become familiar with some of the way that criminals are sentenced through the court system, there should be no surprise that Matthew Sullivan's original charge of first degree murder was dropped to second deg degree murder, which he was convicted of after the jury deliberated for 10 days. This is common within the court system that a black man would be sentenced to a much harsher crime than a white man. We know from the San Diego Prosecutor's Office case files that homicide laws in California say that homicide is defined by law that is the act of killing another person either lawfully or unlawfully. There's basically three types of murder categories within the state of California. First degree murder, second degree murder, and capital murder. According to these California laws, first degree murder is defined as a premeditated killing with malice and afterthought. Felony murder refers to any murder or death that happens during the commission of a felony crime. Now, based on what I've read of the case of Matthew Sullivan, I don't see any reason why he definitely didn't qualify for the first degree murder charge. Now, when we take a look at how California defines second degree murder, it requires one malice and intention. However, with second degree murder, it does not require any type of premeditation or deliberation before the crime. Essentially, second degree murder in California is any murder that is not either first degree murder, felony murder, or capital murder. The penalty in California for second degree murder is 15 years to life in prison. According to Judge Albert Haratunian, post-trial, he said the jury verdict and the evidence at trial made clear that Matthew Sullivan brutally murdered his wife, Elizabeth Sullivan, with method in the way that he cleaned up the messy murder site and then hid the body for years in a small deep freezer in the family home. And like Judge said, he almost got away with it. When we review the last category of murder in the state of California, we're talking about capital murder, which is a murder with special circumstances. They say there are approximately 20 scenarios that could be charged with capital murder. Some of the most common include murder for financial gain, the murder of a public servant, 
murdering a hate crime, murdering a witness to pre prevent them from testifying, and murder to benefit a street gang. The penalty for capital murder can be life in prison, without parole, or capital punishment in California. California remains one of the 28 states that still has the death penalty. Now, what stood out about the definition of capital murder is that murder in a hate crime can be included in the charges, which is an enhancement of the punishment. Now, I say that Matthew Sullivan should have been charged with a hate crime. A hate crime is a crime against a person, group, or property motivated by the victim's real or perceived protected social group, which includes disability, gender, nationality, race, religion, and sexual orientation. And I'm saying that I believe he killed her because she was a black woman. So Elizabeth Sullivan was a black woman. And as, as reported by the San Diego prosecutor, there was a motive and the motive was adultery. Matthew Sullivan accused his black wife of committing adultery. And also there was the issue of abandonment. Matthew Sullivan himself said she was going to leave him. This was a hate crime. The prosecutor said that Matthew Sullivan sat silent and emotionless for most of his sentencing while family members addressed the court. Prosecutor Lindbergh said, the defendant has never shown any sign of remorse for what happened to his black wife or what he did to her or to her family and friends by letting them believe for two years that she just walked out and left and disappeared. In an interview post-conviction and post-sentencing, Calandra Duckett, Elizabeth Sullivan's god sister, said, this sentence will do nothing to fix that she's gone. However, it may help pack the chasm left behind by the demonic act of Matthew Sullivan. She said Elizabeth was loved by many. In closing, I present the question to you, the audience. Why is it that no matter how many of these tragic arrangements end in murder, death, rape, or any kind of abuse, the usual suspects, the Swirl Mountain concubines, the Miss Andrews Banshees, and the male feminist cucks remain almost 100% mute about these tragedies? 